what's up guys so I got a little project today um, shouldn't be too much but I've got this little plate here and I got it from JNS engineering uh, basically this is going to be a, a kickstand pad for my DRZ 400 uh, this is what it is sold as also it's sold as a side stand foot pad pad that you weld on for DRZ 400 uh, Basically, it's just a piece of metal. You know, it's it is steel, so it's not aluminum. It's not too awful heavy, so uh, it, it shouldn't like add much or anything. But basically, I'm going to add this to my DRZ today, and I'm going to try to get that done with what I have because I don't have an expensive welder or a good welder or anything. I basically have just uh, this 70 amp arc welder by Campbell Hosfeld. I think I gave a hundred bucks for this. And I got a pair of gloves, welding rods, and a mask. Um, probably three or four years ago I bought this. And it still works. So I'm going to use that. And hopefully it, it should work. This, this isn't very thick. Uh, I guess we'll see. It looks like it's eighth inch. It's about eighth inch uh, steel plate here. So it should be uh, perfect for what I need. It's not going to bend like my other. I have another video where I made a kickstand out of an aluminum diamond plate. And it's on my KLR right now, and I'll show you that in a minute and why I'm not going to do that again. I'll probably end up getting another one of these plates and welding it on there, too, if this goes well. Because the aluminum actually kind of, you know, where the kickstand sits in the middle, it actually curls up around the edges. It still works great for what it is, but it just doesn't look all that hot. So I've opted for the weld-on version this time, for my DRZ anyway, and then if this goes well, I'll do that for my uh, KLR. So the rods I've got here... Uh, our 116 inch 6013s. So that's what I'm going to use today, and hopefully try to get it done with these. And uh, they're not they're not too bad. Um, I don't remember what size these can weld, but I I think it'll work because it's just for mild steel. And this is this is pretty clean stuff. So yeah, stay tuned. I'm going to show you the foot stand, what it looks foot kickstand, what it looks like now, and I'll show you the KLR one in case you haven't seen that video, and then you'll get the idea of why I'm putting this better. So here's the foot the foot pad that's actually on the DRZ stock, and it's quite quite small. That's probably um, inch and a half by an inch, so it's it's actually quite small. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to weld to this pretty easy because it is pretty thin metal. It's not actually as thick as it as it looks like going down because it actually is a piece of metal that's flat and then curled over on the edges, and it kind of sticks down flat. And you can see the back of it's actually been worn down so it's actually at an angle so it's thinner there and then comes up a little bit thicker here i don't think that'll be a problem but if it does end up being a problem i'll just uh, flatten it all out and make it completely flat even with the smaller side over here and then i'll weld on the the new foot pad and it should be pretty good because actually this end right here is up off the ground you can see and i'm on a absolutely flat piece of concrete here and the bike's sitting how it normally sits and uh, it's up there so pretty much i'm going to uh Flip it up. I'm going to mark it there and then flip it up against the frame and make sure that it's not going to hit anything because actually the original pad does rub a little bit right on that mark. I think that's what it rubbed. And that it may not have done that unless I think I hit a pretty good uh, bump or something riding on the trail. And actually, that's only one scrape there that it's only hit one time. So I'm going to make sure I've got the clearance and everything for that and uh, mark it all up and then I'll take it up there and weld it. On to the KLR foot pad here. You can see that uh, this is the aluminum one I built. I, I don't know how long ago I built this, maybe last year or this year, I, I forget. Um, you can see how much it's curled up on there and it's not doing that well at the moment. I mean it works still but it's not doing that well because I think it's actually rubbing through on the on the soft aluminum and it's kind of curling up there and it looks like the, around where the, uh, the edges of it sit it's kind of dug down into the aluminum from rubbing. And uh, I'm actually going to probably have to replace that. And I think that whatever pad I weld on there may be even lighter than what all the aluminum with the bolts on there would be. Uh, so that's what I'll do after if this one goes well and my welder works all right for it. And uh, then we'll have a decent looking foot, foot stand uh, pad on that one too. So anyway, I'm going to get this marked up and see about welding it on the, welding the pad onto the DRZ. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So I've got my plate here, and I kind of cleaned it up on the grinder, just with the the wire brush on one side. And it's not really too much different than the other side. So I guess whatever steel this is, it's just 
you know, it doesn't clean up very well. It's not, uh, I don't know what you would call it. I'm not a metal worker, but it's, you know, when you usually grind metal, it comes really clean, but this just doesn't uh, look that way. And I guess you can kind of see it on the sides. It's still black. But I don't know if that's just the type of steel it is or what, but basically, I think if I just lift this up. Sit that on there and kind of center it. So now that I know how it needs to be, I don't think I'm going to draw my line while it's on the bike. I think I'll go ahead and get the kickstand off. It's just one bolt in the spring. And then I will uh, put it flat on there. And then draw my line because I know about where it needs to be on here. So all I need to do now is flip this up and just kind of confirm that it's not going to hit if I do do it this way. Okay, so there is a huge gap over here. Like I said, I think this happens when I hit a bump. So there's plenty of room for this kickstand pad. Uh, so I think I can even bring it in off the edge a little bit more into the center. So I think I'll go ahead and uh, raise the bike up and get this off the bike. I did go ahead and clean everything up, flattened out, you know, the surface we're going to weld with pretty good. And what I've come up with is this, and there's hardly a gap there. So I think I'll end up just leaving it flat like this instead of like an angle. Like it, when the bike's sitting flat, it's like this. And it'll be really hard to uh, fill in that gap, so I'm definitely not going to do that. I'm just going to weld it flat and do it just like this. I'm going to mark it now. And then I can kind of see right where I'm going to want to have it. So you can see I've got it pretty well centered this way and then just off centered this way compared to uh, if you measure it all the way from there to there, it's back this way more. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't think I'm actually going to film the welding part. Uh, I don't want to mess up my camera. You know, some people say it won't. Some people say it will. And uh, I don't want to uh, take a chance. So I'm going to get this all uh, set up here. So I'm going to be working on this area here. So what I'll do is hopefully I can uh, clamp it just like this. Even though that may not work. These are rubber. So I think I will... Uh, maybe these come off. Okay, yeah, these come off. That's cool. I didn't realize those come off. But we'll take those off. And now we can use this. <laughs> so like I said, the metal is all clean and everything. So uh, even though it looks dirty, but it's, I guess it's just the way that this plate is. This, this metal's all been cleaned up. Luckily, all the paint was ground off. You can even see it here. It's been rubbed off. So we should be able to get a ground going right on this plate here. And what I'll do is just tack each side and possibly the back and then come around to the front. All right, so I'm going to turn off the camera now and tack this up, and then we'll see what it looks like. Hopefully this... Uh, little welder is going to do good. It's only got a, a a high and a low. So I think we'll try it on the low first and then if nothing else we'll go to high. I think we're going to have to have it on high though. But we'll see if we can not stick a bunch of rods to it on low. Maybe it'll get going for us. All right, so uh, like I said, I didn't want to film it, but we got a couple tacks all the way around, so we're going to knock off the slag. And I really need to get a wire feed is what I need to do, because this would be so good with a wire feed. I've only ever welded with a, a, a stick welder, and I've welded a lot bigger welders too, so this is, you know, pretty simple welder to use, but it's, it can be finicky, because it's, it's just a cheap 70 amp, and... Uh, you know, when you get a duty cycle going, that sucks. So we'll see what these uh, crappy welds look like, but they're not, I don't think they'll ever be too pretty with this. I think with a cheap wire feed, you can do all right, but I really don't think with uh, with these you could do too good, really, ever. So there you go. Ow, hot. <laughs> all right, so that one's good, that one's good, and it's all tacked on there. So. All right, so I think we'll 
clamp it back down. All right, I'm going to click the camera back off and put the cover on. All right, guys, so after just a little bit of time with this uh, welder, you can see I've got quite a bit of bubble gum going. It was really hard to uh, even get the rod going on there. Um, I guess probably the, the nicest looking weld on the whole thing is right there. And uh, it's not that great looking at all. But anyway, uh, a couple times around with the grinder and then I kind of finished in a few spots. Uh, I didn't want to go too much and burn through everything. I probably could have filled it in on, on this side a little bit more in here. But really, this thing is on there and it's definitely solid. Uh, so I think... I think to clean it up, what I'll do, because I'm going to paint it on the top. I mean, the bottom's not going to matter. It's going to get scratched up. It won't rust, really, because as much as it gets moved around, it'll just scrape the rust right off. But what I'm going to do is take the, uh, take the grinder and smooth everything out a little bit more as best as I can. And what I'll do is mix up a little bit of Bondo and just uh, smooth it all the way around this. And then let that dry and paint over that. So hopefully it'll look pretty nice, but it, it's definitely 100% on there. It's it is definitely not coming off anytime soon. All right, so I'm gonna get some bondo mixed up. All right, so I've cleaned it up quite a bit, and uh, I'm gonna mix up some bondo here. I don't think I'll need very much at all, so I'm gonna try to be uh, conserving here because I'm just gonna mix it on this note card. Uh, this stuff only requires like a couple drops, I think. So I'm sure that'll be more. Oh, there we go. Just to be safe, that'll be should be more than enough. So we'll see if this uh, hardens it up very well. All right, so I'm gonna kind of smear it around. I went ahead and cleaned this off with a uh, carb cleaner too, so it should be ready for Bondo for sure. Alright, so it's pretty well dry now. I'm going to go ahead and get it sanded up now. Alright, so I got a couple different sandpapers here. One rough 80, and I think this other one's something like a 300 maybe. So, uh, let's see what we can do with them. right there. I wanted to take a lot more of this off, but it's really a, uh, a thin layer. It's just taking forever to uh, sand it off there, but I, I think it might look all right with just, you know, going out the flat, and it's kind of kind of angled all the way, so I think I'm going to clean it up and get it ready for paint, and then I'm just going to paint like here down. All right, so I got a little bit of Krylon black mat here. Uh, it's rust protection for metal or wood, indoor, outdoor, paint and primer. So I guess I'll throw a little bit of that on there and we'll, we'll see what it looks like. All right guys, I'm back on a different day, just the next day here. And I spent all the rest of the next day putting a coat of paint on every half hour because it was some pretty quick dry stuff and it really only needed about 20 minutes in between coats just light coats and uh, so I put a coat on every half hour and it seemed to work out well and you can just see how uh, how smooth it turned out I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera over and bolt it back up and see what it looks like Alright, so this should go on as easily as it come off. I think when I took it off, I bent it way up here, so hopefully I should be able to uh, put these springs back onto here. Alright, there's the other one. So now, get our bolt ready. 
put some Loctite on here. And the bolt through from this side. Anyway guys, I appreciate everybody watching and hopefully you enjoyed watching me weld this on here. It was pretty fun, uh, just something to do. And it definitely looks a lot better on there than the one that I got on the KLR650. So anyways, thanks for watching everybody. Thank <laughs> you.